Now, research reveals that South Africans suffer high rates of probable depression and anxiety than other countries. This is according to VET's Medical Research Council Developmental Pathways for Health Research Unit. At the same time, the World Health Organization reports that more than 700,000 people die due to suicide every year. Now, this highlights the importance of mental health awareness conversations. Good evening, my name is Masa Chaba Kobola, standing in for Tabo Molokwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we unpack mental health and the importance of conversations on managing mental health conditions as well as the different ways that we can assist ourselves and others suffering from mental health issues. Now joining me in studio to have this conversation is Dr. Leda Silamolela Musima, who is a clinical psychologist with Leda Consulting Services. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Master Chaba, for inviting me. Look, I want us to start with what exactly is mental health? Okay, when we look at mental health, um, a lot comes to mind. People, you know, use the term mental health to actually describe mental illness. However, mental health is when a person is able to cope and deal with everyday situations that result in being effective in your social life, having healthy relationships, and be able to deal with you know everyday challenge and mental health or mental well-being. Yeah, I think it relates to your overall mental well-being. It brings about fulfillment in your life. Um, the person becomes resilient. They can deal with everyday challenges and they can easily adapt to um, changes that they may face. Like you might find that somebody goes through grief, bereavement. So a person who is mentally healthy will be able to cope over those kind of challenges. And mental illness is the opposite of that. I want to, s I'm very aware that there are four um, aspects um, that have been identified for one's mental health overall, they, they, they identified as very important, right? It could be your physical health, your emotional, your cognitive, and your social. And I did hear that you mentioned social yes. um, in your previous um, answer. Can you tell us at least how do these come together? Mm. All those things that you just mentioned, they relate um, with one another. Like earlier on, I was talking about mental health and mental illness. Physical health is as important as mental health. Um, how is it important, you know, maybe let's take for example somebody just got diagnosed with cancer. That can also affect the person's mental health, how they deal with situation on a mental level. So physical health is very, very important and how that comes to play is the person needs to take care of their physical health in terms of exercising, eating healthy. Cognitive um, development is also very important for your mental health. So they all relate your social well-being, how you're able to interact with other, you know, people, because we are also social beings. The minute you start isolating yourself, you don't grow. You don't receive input from your environment. So all these four aspects are relating to one another. So for a person to fully function optimally, those four functions, um, they, they relate. And as a human being, you need to take care of all of them. What are the signs? I, fi I feel like a lot of um, us tend to play loosely with the word mental health, your depression, your bipolar, and, and, and. How do you know that I could be um, possibly suffering from mental health or a mental health condition? Yeah, as you're saying, like, for instance, people will just throw a term, say, I am depressed mm. today, whereas the person is just sad, or they, you know, just having a bit of anxiety, like mm. when you have a program or an event, there's that little thing that, you know, shows that you, you're, you must be at least not comfortable. But that is not necessarily saying that you're suffering from mental illness. So how do you identify or you know, those that are around you can actually help you to see the signs that you are actually suffering from mental illness. As professionals, we have a way in which we diagnose. There's what we call a DSM, but those that are living with a person, the minute the person has a sad mood, um, depressed mood, 
and it starts affecting your daily activities. Let's take, for example, a child. You know, the child starts behaving in a bizarre manner or inappropriate manner, and that behavior starts affecting their schoolwork, and they start isolating themselves. They don't engage anymore with their friends. You know, that, you know, it can be a sign that, you know, this child is actually suffering from mental illness and affects their appetite. They start not eating well. Like normal changes, daily activities, and if we're looking at an adult, it can also affect their occupational tasks, like they start banking work or their occupational performance drops. So that is some of the things that, you know, as family members or those that are significant others around us can help us to identify that we are actually suffering from a mental illness. Things like the person starts you know, having difficulties making decisions, simple decisions, or the person starts um, losing meaning for life, they become hopeless, and it affects their daily activities. In that way, you can start identifying the signs that you are actually suffering from mental illness. I'm going to ask that we pause this for a while, but when we come back from the ad break, we are continuing with the conversation on mental health awareness. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We're wrapping up our mental health awareness uh, conversation with Dr. Leta Selamulela Musiba, who is a clinical psychologist at Leta Consulting Services. Um, mental health is the stigma around it. I'm not happy. One, people are very afraid to say they are sick or they're suffering from mental health or they're suffering, you know, the stigma around it, mm. how can it be destigmatized? How can we decrease the stigma that is, especially the, the bad comments surrounded by that? Mm. You know, we still have a long way um, regarding dealing with the stigma because there's still a lot of misconception regarding mental illness. Unlike physical illness that people can see the symptoms that you know you are going through this and that mental illness sometimes without um, people not believing you they it's like for instance when a child is depressed they can easily be saying no 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 uh -uh. you don't want to do school work you know, you don't want to do this. You are just lazy because sometimes you find that when people are depressed, they sleep a lot or they eat too much, you know. So those kind of symptoms, we need education. Communities need to be educated regarding mental illness. Um, there are things like schizophrenia, when people would be laughing at somebody saying that, you know, this person was sanya, this person is crazy. However, this person is actually suffering from a mental illness condition which they need medication for. So we still have a long way in terms of education, ed educating our communities. You know, parents need to know so that they don't judge um, their children. The community in general, we just need education and awareness that this is actually something serious that needs to be dealt with. Kids have a very hard time with expressing themselves. You mentioned that sometimes as parents, we are very hard on children and we, the child could be depressed, but we'll just find an excuse, hold on, no, why are you depressed when you've got DSTV at home? Why are you depressed because we have this at home? You know, what are the signs? I, I think parents watching right now need to understand and see the signs and know also um, how they can be of help. Perhaps can you mention some of the ways that you can identify a depressed child and how can you easily assist them from home? Mm. Well, normally as parents, we need to know our children. We need to know how they behave. And the minute there's a change in behavior in terms of attending to daily activities, that is number one. And then you identify that there is a sad mood, um, or irritability, especially when it comes to children, you, you'll see that they become irritable. And actually children are very easy to deal with because they have not learned a lot of mechanisms in terms of defending themselves. 
it's easy to actually pick up that no, 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 this child is not eating like they used to eat. This child is no longer engaging with their peers. They are now isolating themselves. They're not doing their work. They are banking homework. They are, not, they are becoming not interested in their schoolwork. Their marks are dropping. They are complaining about how they look. You know, so the minute as a parent you identify those kind of things, don't be quick to judge, don't be quick to discipline, find out what is happening, get to the child's level, and we always say children learn through play. You know, just get to their level, and the biggest thing to do, the biggest force in the whole world is love. When you love people, they are able to change. So don't start by, I want to discipline this child, I want to, you know, love on its own, create a space, a trusting environment for you to be able to get information and help your child. Is mental health or uh, a, a chronic care? And what does that mean for the ordinary person um, as far as ensuring that they are taking care of themselves? Well, looking at whether it's a chronic care or not, depending on the condition that we are talking about. For instance, if we look at schizophrenia, with schizophrenia, the person definitely, it's a long-term thing where the person needs definitely medication and education regarding whatever particular mental illness there is. And once the person um, takes medication regularly, there is a balance, the, you know, homeostasis that the person can actually function. There are acute conditions that, you know, once the person attends therapy or whatever um, treatment from the psychiatrist, once the person gets that particular treatment and the psychotherapy, they are able to deal away with the symptom. So it depends which condition. And something that we didn't mention earlier is the self-diagnosis that people do. You know, it's very, very, very important that even if you identify the signs, you need to go and consult with a mental health professional so that they can do a proper diagnosis and plan the proper treatment because you might think, no, it's just anxiety, but it's something else. They will know what triggered whatever condition it is. Do we have any resources currently at our disposal for mental health? And if so, how can the government um, tap in and help? We do have resources, like for instance, people can consult psychologists, we have counsellors that they are working at their private practices, and we have government institutions Government hospital do offer this service and people can actually, they are very accessible. You, there are psychologists, counsellors, social workers that are working at government institutions. And I've seen also people consulting with their pastors, which also work, and they would know when to refer to an expert who can actually, you know, provide assistance. But the most important, as we said earlier, not to just self-diagnose and self-treat yourself because you might create more harm. I really wish we had a lot of time for us so that we can actually unpack this thoroughly because mental health is actually a broad conversation, right? But I'm hoping next time we will have more time for that. That was Dr. Leda Selamulela Musima, who is a clinical psychologist with Leda Consulting, helping us unpack mental health and ways to manage different mental conditions as we commemorate World Mental Health Awareness Month. Now, this month serves not only to educate the public about mental health, but also to reduce the stigma and di discrimination that people with mental illness are often subjected to. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to engage with us or engage with us about the episode by simply sending us an email on Soweto Today at sowetotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us on 081-531-8857. From myself, Master Chaba Kobola, Kolia Mabirogana, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching. We'll see you right after this as we wrap up the stories of the day. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We're wrapping up our mental health awareness uh, conversation with Dr. Leta Selamulela Musima, who is a clinical psychologist at Leta Consulting Services. Um, 
mental health is the stigma around it. I'm not happy. One, people are very afraid to say they are sick or they're suffering from mental health or they're suffering, you know, the stigma around it. Mm. How can it be destigmatized? How can we decrease the stigma that is, especially the, the bad comments surrounded by that? Mm. You know, we still have a long way um, regarding dealing with the stigma because there's still a lot of misconception regarding mental illness. Unlike physical illness that people can see the symptoms that you know you are going through this and that. Mental illness sometimes without um, people not believing you they it's like for instance when a child is depressed they can easily be saying, no, 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 uh -uh. you don't want to do schoolwork. You know, you don't want to do this. You are just lazy because sometimes you find that when people are depressed, they sleep a lot or they eat too much, you know. So those kind of symptoms, we need education. Communities need to be educated regarding mental illness. Um, there are things like schizophrenia when people would be laughing at somebody saying that, you know, this person was Sanya, this person is crazy. However, this person is actually suffering from a mental illness condition which they need medication for. So we still have a long way in terms of education, ed educating our communities, you know, parents need to know so that they don't judge um, their children. The community in general, we just need education and awareness that this is actually something serious that needs to be dealt with. Kids have a very hard time with expressing themselves. You mentioned that sometimes as parents we are very hard on children and we the child could be depressed but we'll just find an excuse for to know why are you depressed when you've got DSTV at home? Why are you depressed because we have this at home? You know what are the signs? I, I think parents watching right now need to understand and see the signs and know also um, how they can be of help. Perhaps can you mention some of the ways that you can identify a depressed child and how can you easily assist them from home? Mm. Well, normally as parents, we need to know our children. We need to know how they behave. And the minute there's a change in behavior in terms of attending to daily activities, that is number one. And then you identify that there is a sad mood um, or irritability, especially when it comes to children. You, you'll see that they become irritable. And actually children are very easy to deal with because they have not learned a lot of mechanisms in terms of defending themselves. It's easy to actually pick up that, no, 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 this child is not eating like they used to eat. This child is no longer engaging with their peers. They are now isolating themselves. They are not doing their work. They are banking homework. They are, not, they are becoming not interested in their schoolwork. Their marks are dropping. They are complaining about how they look. You know, so the minute as a parent you identify those kind of things, don't be quick to judge, don't be quick to discipline, find out what is happening, get to the child's level, and we always say children learn through play. You know, just get to their level, and the biggest thing to do, the biggest force in the whole world is love. When you love people, they are able to change. So don't start by, I want to discipline this child. I want to, you know, love on its own, create a space, a trusting environment for you to be able to get information and help your child. Is mental health or uh, a chronic care? And what does that mean for the ordinary person um, as far as ensuring that they are taking care of themselves? Well, looking at whether it's a chronic care or not, depending on the condition that we are talking about. For instance, if we look at schizophrenia, with schizophrenia, the person definitely, it's a long-term thing where the person needs definitely medication and education regarding whatever particular mental illness there is. And once the person um, takes medication regularly, there is a balance, the, you know, homeostasis that the person can actually function. There are acute conditions that, 
you know, once the person attends therapy or whatever um, treatment from the psychiatrist, once the person gets that particular treatment and the psychotherapy, they are able to deal away with the symptom. So it depends which condition. And something that we didn't mention earlier is the self-diagnosis that people do. You know, it's very, very, very important that even if you identify the signs, you need to go and consult with a mental health professional so that they can do a proper diagnosis and plan the proper treatment because you might think, no, it's just anxiety, but it's something else. They will know what triggered whatever condition it is. Do we have any resources currently at our disposal for mental health? And if so, how can the government um, tap in and help? We do have resources, like for instance, people can consult psychologists, we have counsellors that they are working at their private practices, and we have government institutions. Government hospitals do offer this service and people can actually, they are very accessible. You, there are psychologists, counsellors, social workers that are working at government institutions. And I've seen also people consulting with their pastors, which also work, and they would know when to refer to an expert who can actually, you know, provide assistance. But the most important, as we said earlier, not to just self-diagnose and self-treat yourself because you might create more harm. I really wish we had a lot of time for us so that we can actually unpack this thoroughly because mental health is actually a broad conversation, right? But I'm hoping next time we will have more time for that. That was Dr. Leda Selamulela Musima, who is a clinical psychologist with Leda Consulting, helping us unpack mental health and ways to manage different mental conditions as we commemorate World Mental Health Awareness Month. Now this month serves not only to educate the public about mental health, but also to reduce the stigma and di discrimination that people with mental illness are often subjected to. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to engage with us or engage with us about the episode by simply sending us an email on Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us on 081-531-8857. From myself, Masa Chaba Kobola, Kolia Madirogana, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching. We'll see you right after this as we wrap up the stories of the day.